continuing in the 41st chapter, and we're speaking about um, intent. We're speaking about when you do good, when you do a mitzvah, the intent that a person should have. And what we spoke about in this chapter is that the basis, the foundation, is the sense of presence of God in your life. That is not, you know, abstract, removed, but is present. And not because he's punishing, not because of any negativity. On the contrary, a very positive reason is because that will change our behavior. As we know that when someone is in the room, right, someone's in the clubhouse, we act differently than when someone is, um, you know, uh, alone. Especially if you're feeling that you're lonely and alone, boy, is your behavior, you know, can really go down a slippery slope. Um, as I've mentioned, one of the things I do is I run a drug crisis center, Chabad Lifeline. And as a matter of fact, I think even Chabad Lifeline is on. Um, and the disease of addiction, which is taking this idea to the nth degree, is the feeling of being alone that you are literally separate, separate from others, um, separate from God, and alone. And that is crippling, that is devastating, that destroys lives. So the antidote, antidote is that you're really never alone. God is always present. And the point of this idea is very simple to improve our behavior again because if god is present if he's seeing what i'm doing right now right i will act differently than if i feel no one is watching what i am doing that is a basic idea now the whole point of this is in order that when i do good it should bring me to another level of wanting to connect to god that presence then brings me wanting to connect to to god just like, you know, if, if someone that you really, um, that you really admire is present in the room, aren't you going to behave differently um, than if the person wasn't there? Why would you do that? Very simple. Because you want to connect with that individual. You, you, you like that person. You adore that person, right? So you're going to behave differently in front of them than you would if they're not there. And that is the point over here, that we would behave differently. And and the point of that is that when we're doing a mitzvah, like studying Torah right now, that we are aware of God's presence and that through that I'm going to now have intent that through my learning, I want to connect to God. I want to connect to him through this. I want to have my soul cleave, my animal being in my body to be bound up and connected with him. That's powerful. That's the intent and the, the, the concept that we're speaking about over here. Until now, in brief. What the Alter Rebbe now does is take this to a new level. And it's not all about you. And now, you know, when you, you know, when you think, you know, this song, you think this song is all about you, right? Well, no, 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 no. That's about your, that you're such an egomaniac <laughs> that you think it's, you know, that, that everything's about you. I'm not talking about that. That is off the books. That is just nothing to do with Tanya, that kind of person. I'm talking a person who wants to connect to God, who wants to do good, who wants to improve their behavior, who wants to be a better person. I mean, that's the kind of person we're talking about over here. That's a... a that's a lofty individual, you know. Um, yet, that's all about you. In a good way. In a good way. In a good way, it's all about you and you connecting to your source. You connecting to your to the truth of who you are in your divine connection through the good that you do, which is amazing. The alternative says we need to actually take it to another level. And that level is... As our sages say in the Talmud, 
in the Talmud, they say that a, a person should never separate themselves from the community. Now, the simple meaning of that is, you know, uh, as a Jew, you can't go live off on a desert island and, you know, get your 4,532 Penguin Classic books called the Torah, you know, not that there is that in the Penguin Classics, but get the idea. And kind of live on your own is, uh, uh, you know, and uh, observe your Jewish life of, you know, Shabbos and kosher and uh, prayer and whatever, you know, holidays and mitzvahs that there are to do and do it on your own. That's a simple meaning. No, don't separate yourself from the community. You need to be part of a community. That's very important. A deeper level, the Altar brings this, is that it's sh this idea of wanting to connect to God through the mitzvah that you do should not just be about you connecting to God. It should be about the community also. All souls. And, and specifically here, he speaks in the, in, in the, in the terms of Jewish souls, um, as there is a unique bond, uh, connection between all Jewish souls. So that is specifically the context and the, and the intent over here, or the meaning over here. Um, through that, there is a connection to all of humanity, but there is that first and foremost connection to the, the Jewish soul. So he explains that a person should have intent to attach themselves, of course, no, no question, that you should be attached. But in addition to that, that you need to also, through the good that you're doing, that you're attaching yourself, you're attaching yourself to all the souls of the Jewish people. Now, what's the understanding of this? How, how do we get this? What, do we, what does this mean exactly? Okay, so al explains that the 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 the, um, the Shrina, which means the divine presence of God, which is feminine, which we're going to get into that in a moment, a uh, very interesting idea over here. That it is feminine part of the divine. It is the source. It is Malchus of Atzilus is the, uh, the the geographical location, shall we say, in the divine order of things. So that Shrina, the uh, Malchus, the sovereignty, the royalty of uh, of the divine is what uh, dwells, enclosed, and animates all of creation. It is the word of God that is gives life to everything. But that is the external will of the Shechina, or the external aspect of the Shechina, that it gives, animates all of its existence. At the same time, the inner will, or the inner aspect of the Shechina, is that it gives me and you the power of speech. That we can now, as I'm speaking, words of Tanya, words of Torah, or the power of action to do a commandment. Right, so it's the Shekhinah, that feminine aspect of the divine, that vests itself in the world to animate it, at the same time vests in me um, internally, in order, or with internal desire, right, of the Shekhinah, in order to give me the power that what I'm doing right now, saying the words of, words of Torah. Now, this, there's a union over here of the source of the Jewish souls, is also from the Shechina, Malchus Vatzilus, the inner aspect of it. So when I'm occupying myself, like right now, in saying words of Torah, right, or if you're doing an action of a commitment, what, uh, of a commandment, what are you doing? You are now drawing down from the light of the limitlessness of God called the Ein Saif. You're drawing that down here. In this moment, I'm doing that. And you're all doing it in the the words of Torah that are being that we're occupying ourselves in, right? And it's I'm being united with it, but I should also have an intent that not only am I being united with that ain't safe limitless light of God in this moment of of study, but I should also have in mind that through this I should also bring it to the souls of all the Jewish people and unite all the souls of the Jewish people with God. And it's not just for me. I mean, thinking about all the souls of the Jewish people. And by the way, 
through that, and this is the concept of what it means the Jewish people are, are a light unto the nations, through that we become a light and bring that light to all nations of the world. But um, it first comes in for the unique connection that there is amongst Jewish souls to have this idea, this uh, union. And for those who are familiar with prayer, and if you know the uh, the, the the prayer of um, in the Chabad Siddur on page 30 in the blue Siddur, so before the Baruch Sha'amar, we say, L'shem yuchut kutshe brichu l'shechinte b'shem kol Yisrael. We say, for the sake, we're doing a mitzvah now of prayer, so we're saying that this prayer, and as a matter of fact, all the mitzvahs that we do during the day, should be for the sake of the union of Kutcher Brichu, which means the Holy One, blessed be He, which is the male aspect of the divine, with His Shechina, which is the feminine aspect of the divine. And that's what a union is, male and female. So just like there's a union down here of male and female, um, likewise, I mean, not likewise. <laughs> the reason why there is that down here is because that's what it is up there. There's that union. and But the important thing is, in other words, in the act of doing a mitzvah or creating a union, what happens when you make a union? You beget something. You beget. I mean, physically down here, you can beget a child. And even if you don't beget a child, you, be, you beget a union that brings um, a, a supernal divine light um, and the reason for that is, is because when we do a mitzvah down here, like now studying Torah, we bring a union up there. We create a union in the divine between the male, Kodesh Baruch Hu, Holy One, Blessed Be He, and the, and the feminine, Shechina, um, and create that union. And what does that beget? A new light. A new light that enters into this world that has Hitherto not been here, literally, and not uh, did not exist. But now through the midst of it, I'm doing, I'm bringing a new light. Now that new light, for the most part, um, a person is bringing that upon their soul, upon their being, that new light of God. The novelty in today's class is, is that we should have intent not only to do that. But we should bring it upon all the souls of the Jewish people. Um, which, you know, means how connected the Jewish people are and how vital it is that when we do something, we know that I'm not just affecting me, but, you know, uh, I'm affecting a, a Jewish soldier, Israeli soldier on the front lines and protecting um the people in israel from enemies then if i'm doing a mitzvah here i'm actually affecting over there why because our souls are connected and therefore there is bringing that divine light into this world that will make a difference and as the Alter Rebbe says in a note over here something we mentioned previously that this also brings a coalescing through this um divine light that we create a coalescing of the divine attributes and and why is there a coalescing between divine attributes is because the divine attributes are divine and they want to get together they want to come together um and especially because the supernal will of god is that they should come together which is even beyond the divine attributes so you have for example if there is you know you have chesed and gvura you have chesed divine kindness and gvura divine severity um, which means judgment and when you do a mitzvah you are bringing a coalescing a new light because you are bringing a union between the kindness and the severity that if there's a judgment god forbid a negative judgment against me or anybody else of the jewish people by me doing this mitzvah i can bring this new light that will now sweeten the severities and could annul ultimately a judgment has the capability of doing that that's the power of a mitzvah um has that capacity that we can literally uh annul a decree and now you know righteous people 
they know about those decrees, what's going on, and therefore they, with their intent, they can pinpoint, so to speak, where the sweetening of severities need to occur and how through a particular mitzvah that can happen. You know, um, and, you know, as, as, uh, I've, I've told the story before of, uh, I had real back problems. It was a couple of weeks flat on my back and I rode into the Rebbe for a bracha and he um, told me, actually when I was coming by for dollars, that uh, Rabbi Groner told me that, that the Rebbe answered, you should get your twill and mezuzahs checked. Which I was surprised because I just had them checked two and a half months earlier. Um, of course, I listened, got them checked, and thank God my back got much better. So what was it? It was the mitzvah of, you know, mitzvah of listening to a, to a Rebbe, mitzvah of checking the twill and the mezuzahs, and by the way, there were some problems with the mezuzahs that I had. Oh, I, I just got them checked, and there were problems with it. But so, so was the fact, and I got them checked. Um, and uh, my back got better. Well, what, why am I bringing this up? Is because this is idea of through a mitzvah you can sweeten the severities, right? And the Rebbe, you know, knew exactly knew to pinpoint. Where I, what I need to do specifically in my particular case, you know, I wouldn't have known otherwise. Um, probably wouldn't have known. The point, though, over here is that we create a union between the male female above, between and not just the male female above, but also that's a Kodesh Baruch the Holy One, blessed be He, is it? If we translate in English, and Shechina, divine presence. Um, Malchus of Atzilus, the Word of God that is the animating force of creation. That's the feminine part of, uh, you know, that's why creation is a feminine outcome, shall we say. And uh, and of course, the the inner part of the Shekhinah is the residing of the divine, uh, of the Jewish souls, and the place where um, the power that I have to speak the words of Torah or to do a mitzvah, uh, to do a, an action oriented mitzvah that comes from there and therefore the intent over here as we said again just to summarize uh, it's actually a brief class today a very specific idea is that the intent I should have is not only that my soul should cleave and connect to God through the act of goodness and kindness that I do, the mitzvah that I do, the study of Torah, the prayer, the, the you know, whatever observance we're doing, giving charity, um, whatever it is, but that I am also bringing this as a sustenance to the souls of all of Israel. Wow. Yeah, powerful idea. So, do we have any uh, questions, any comments? So is this a way, or how exactly are you bringing this to the souls of Israel, to all the people? How do we bring this? By, by this intent. This is the intent we should have. You know, I should have an intent of me being connected. But it's not just me being connected, as the, as the Altered Rebbe quoted from our sages, that we shouldn't separate, separate ourselves from the community. So the deeper meaning of not separating yourself from the community is connect with the community, the mitzvah that you do. Meaning, connect to the, all the souls in the mitzvah that you're doing. I have in mind that this is a light that you want to imbue all of Israel with. That's the idea, which is very powerful. And that's what it means. It's not about me. <laughs> A different idea of what it means. It's not about me. Right. Yeah. So, I'm looking for any questions here on Facebook. Daniel, we, we as B'nai Noyach. Daniel is a B'nai Noyach, which means the children of Noah which are people who have taken upon themselves to fulfill the seven Noahide universal laws, 
as the Torah speaks about. Um, um, so he says, we as B'nai Nai, um, of course, can separate ourselves from the community. Can you separate yourself from the community? Well, uh, again, on a simple level, we all need to be part of the community because we need the support system. Um, we, we, we can't separate ourselves from others, uh, you know, and, and that's very important. Even someone who's a Ben Noyach also should have that concept of being part of the community because we need that strength. Here, the Alter Rebbe is taking this to a different level of uh, what it means not separate yourself from the community because your souls are coming from the same source in the same place, and therefore, because of that bond, um, that's what is the the uniqueness over here, but yeah, there should be still a connection. Um, does anybody here on Clubhouse have a question or comment or something to share? Um, oh, okay. Let me look up. I think I missed somebody. I missed Marty. Hold on. Okay, there's some of the comments that I can't get back to because it's, if you can repost the comments, Marty, and uh, someone else I think that I might have missed um, because it seems to have gotten lost over here. Marty, if you can repost your question, please, that would be great. Daniel, you asked a question yesterday. If you want to re-ask that, I don't recall. Um, all right. Marcy, Anastasia, Marjan, anything to share with us? You shared yesterday. I don't know if today you have something to share or not. Um do we have here on Instagram? Batya? Any questions? I don't see. Matilda, is it Shina? The word is Shina. It's a hard word, but that's what the word, yeah. Um, okay, Marty, if you can repost. And anybody else something to share? Um, I, I do want to make a comment about the fact that um, you know, some people might be uncomfortable. The idea, you know, there's a uh, people, uh, you know, in Western society, and it's only in Western society. It's not in other societies. Uh, just in Western society is this idea of universalism, and that you know we're all the same, and therefore why are we making a distinction over here? Um, of you know, bringing this divine light into the souls of the, of the Jewish people, well, why not a universalist um, perspective on this and to all of humanity? So I, I did mention before that he, that there is, it, from there it does come to all of humanity, absolutely. Um, and in that respect, Israel, the land of Israel, is the focal point of the world because all the prayers go up through the Holy Temple now what's left of it, the Western Wall, and from there they all sort of ascend on high, and then from there they come back. That's why we face Jerusalem, by the way. It's not just for our intent and to know, but because our prayers then direct and go up from there, and then the light, the divine light that comes back down, comes back through the Holy Temple or the Western Wall, what's remaining of it, and from there, you know, to the Holy Land, Holy people, or the Jewish people, and from there to all of humanity. Um, to all of humanity. 
So, um, you know, um, we blow our shoifer, shoifer, the ram's horn, and the only way you can get a sound from it is if you take the narrow place, blow, and then the from the narrow, it comes to a more um, um, uh, um, expansive part of the ram's horn the noise comes out from. So each of us have a shoifer, we have a message for the, uh, for the world, but it needs to come through the narrow, from the parochial, from the parochial to the universal. So we start with the parochial, that is the union and the bond that there is between all Jewish souls. And from there, it comes to all of humanity. Um, it doesn't start with all of humanity, though. Right, it starts with the narrow, and that's how our voice, that's what our... Um, messages is in that manner and that's a healthy one because then it gives you also a sense of real identity of real you know real being of of a person you're not just a human but you're a human <laughs> this unique identity and for a jew that means it's a jew may Noma. i ask you something please Sh sure relationship that the Jewish people have with God and it's a great responsibility um, and one of those things is to get along that the Jewish people need not to be fighting each other but that's one of like, <laughs> the most important things that the Jewish people can do to unite right oh Vilma you said it well you know wow well so you know God creates a world that has light, but also has darkness, has good, and also has evil. And there's an equilibrium. So wherever you're going to have the holiest, you're also going to have the very opposite. And that's the challenge, is to overcome that. Very, very insightful what you're saying, and very true. Um, yeah, we need to get along. And... Um, and one of the ways we get along is actually, uh, you know, mentioning about Israel. So, you know, one of the problems of Israel, and um, I heard this from, uh, from a good friend of mine, someone I learned from. Uh, so he says, you know, in Israel, there's no Jews. There's no Jews in Israel. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean no Jews in Israel? Well, um, there's Haredi Jews, ultra-Orthodox Jews. There is, um, you know, secular Jews. There is um, Kippas Jews. There is all different types of Jews. There is all different types of uh, uh, different types of Jews. They all have an adjective to describe what kind of Jew they are. But is there a Jew Jew? Just a Jew, you know, like a Jew in St. Louis, Missouri, or in, you know in Edmonton, Alberta, he just calls himself a Jew, not, you know, this this kind of Jew. Um, you know, Orthodox, conservative, uh, you know, I'm not an Orthodox Jew, I'm a Jew. I go with Chabad teachings that imbue and give me the understanding of what it means a Jew. But I'm, not, I'm not a Chabad Jew, no such thing, a Chabad Jew. You're a Jew, period. Chabad teachings that give me the insight and give me the, uh, the the proper perspective or the proper outlook on what it means to be a Jew, you know, and and so on. But I'm not a, a you know, I'm a Chabad Jew and you're this kind of Jew. No, no, there's only one kind, a Jew. If we had that sentiment, right, all of us, and even though we might have a different understanding of it and a different perspective, we would be able to respect each other and be able to sit at the same table and say L'chaim together even though we may not agree on things, but at least we'll be able to sit together. Because if I'm a Haredi Jew, an ultra-Orthodox Jew, well then, uh, you know, I'm going to be comfortable with an ultra-Orthodox other kind of person, because that's what kind of Jew I am. And if I'm a secular Jew, so I'm going to be comfortable with a secular individual, but not someone who is, you know, very religious. I'm not going to be comfortable with that. Well, that's the problem. Is because you've defined your Judaism in that manner, rather than you're just simply a Jew. Yes, you have a 
maybe a different philosophy and a different way to look at things and different perspective on life and it might be au contraire entirely from someone else yeah but we still have something common we're both jews so we both have souls that come from the same place and therefore we were bound together we are literally bound together and that is you know part of the problem that we're of course dealing with um uh in the world today but uh thank you for bringing that up okay i have over here from michael logic tells me that the souls like physical matter would be connected across vast distances right exactly very true uh marty question the desire to connect to god leads us to a pure mitzvah then wonderful that is not about me okay I don't know what the question was there. Seems more like a comment. I'm not sure what the comment was meant to mean <laughs> um, at all, but uh, that's okay. Not always do I get it, you know. But what I do get, Marty, what I do get, Marty, is that we're, we are connected. That I do get. All right, folks. Beautiful. Um, Eduardo, I see that you uh, invite you to speak. Hi, how are you doing? Thank God. How are you? Thank you for joining. Marlisha. So, uh, one of the things that uh, I always have questioned as, as a Jew is that when you are, when you are, going to learning uh, they tell you you can learn this you can learn that but there is certain mystical things that you cannot learn because you ha- you don't have the exact knowledge to learn right uh, now how how does one acquire that knowledge if you are not allowed 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 to learn that learn that um so I'm not certain what you mean. If you're talking about like learning the Zohar, uh, if that's what your reference is, so then you know we we need to um, you know learning the Zohar. You need to uh, have some background before you can learn and understand the Zohar. And if you're learning, if you're talking about Tanya, then that is something yes you could learn at any point in your journey. You don't have to wait for that. So. Um, you know there are certain things yes that we do have to have some kind of background and other things that no that we can you know jump in immediately so um but uh, you know uh, there's plenty of things that we can engage in and jump into and make a part of our lives okay so i don't think that that should be i i, I hope that that should not be something that should uh, hold you back De- definitely you can join us learn tanya over here <laughs> all right I hope Perfect. that. All right, thank you, Eduardo. I hope that answered. Marjan, please share with us. Hello, Rabbi. Um, I was wondering how this idea of praying for others fit into this whole discussion. And I don't mean just uh, having other souls in mind when we are doing a mitzvah. I mean literally praying for someone else's intentions. Because I've heard that, for example, when I want A, B, and C, instead, and I know that my friend also wants the very exact, the very same. A, B, and C, uh, if I pray for my friend's intentions first, um, Hashem will also listen to my prayers better or something like that. How right. does that idea fit into this discussion? So if it's in very, you know, very simply in the fact that uh, you know, all souls are connected, so therefore, you know, I, you know, it's interesting, um, people tell me, you know, uh, you know, Rabbi, you pray for me today. You know, someone will say to me, so so, so I'll say, well, you know what? I, I, if I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to eat for you too, okay? And you don't eat. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I say jokingly. Um, in other words, when it comes to food, when it comes to material things, uh, you know, I can only eat for myself, right? I can only um, I, I can only take care of my physical needs. I mean, you can help me in my physical needs, but you can't. You know, no one can eat for me. I have to eat for myself. But when it comes for spiritual needs, there I can bring something to another person. And uh, whether it's through a mitzvah, 
um, bringing that to them, or prayer, because the souls are connected. Bodies are separated, souls are connected. And since the souls are connected, I can, through my prayer, bring something to that soul that is lacking and needs um, when uh, maybe they couldn't do it or, or even whether they could or couldn't, I, I can bring it to them. And indeed, um, when we think about others, then God always brings to us, um, brings to us, you know, things that we would otherwise not have. Absolutely correct what you said, Marjan. So, you know, the key to this is that our souls are connected and therefore we have the capacity to pray for another because we are connected um, and we can bring them. Does that uh, bring clarity? Yes, Rabbi, thank you so much. Thank you, Marjan. Anastasia, please share. Rabbi, everybody, good morning, good Shabbos. Good morning. Rabbi, I, I would like to ask a question, and I would uh, not, uh, with a lot of reservation. Go ahead. In prayers, we, uh, we uh, for example, in, in Mariv, we ask Hashem to protect those who should protect the team. Is it possible that some souls have more value, more weight than other souls? Uh, in terms of, for example, Jews that we do not consider to have halachic way of life, for example, reform Jews, can we consider, or, or even like, say, patrilineal Jews who are halachically non Jewish, can we consider their souls to be of a less or different value? Uh, I'm very sorry if I offend anybody. I, I do believe that my soul is of a, of a, of a lesser value, but uh, just, uh, yeah, that it's Anastasia, I'm not speaking. Okay, thank you, uh, Anastasia. So, um, uh, I guess when it comes to a Jewish soul, you could give the metaphor of uh, pregnancy. Either you are pregnant or you're not pregnant. Uh, uh, you can't be a half a Jew. Either you're a complete Jew or you're not Jewish. Um, um now it could be a convert that converts that's a, another story but then they when they convert then they get a complete jewish soul a hundred percent they don't someone who converts to judaism doesn't get a partial soul they have a hundred percent soul they're as jewish as i am and i my mother's jewish my grandmother is jewish and you know and great grandmother and all the way back uh, i'm presuming as far as i know you know are, are jewish so um um there is no distinction between that person that um converted according to halacha right only if it's according to halacha um and uh, someone who was many generations coming from a jewish uh, background why because it's based on soul and either you have the flame of a jewish soul or you don't have it it's you know it's not a partial flame the only thing is that before a person converts, they have a spark of a Jewish soul that needs to be ignited into a complete flame of a soul. That is uh, that is definitely you know a a, poss a possibility, but um, it's it, it's got to be you know become a a complete flame of a of a Jewish soul. So um, in that sense, there is it's either yes or no um sometimes you know, difficulties to know because uh of you know uh, to know if the mother was jewish or you know uh, if there was a conversion that was improperly not properly and so on and so forth um you know so that's only because it's difficult to 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 know the facts but the fact would be in the end one way or the other is that bring clarity it does, Robert. Thank you. And how about you know when we when we talk about the people who are on oh. the, the high spiritual level right. and like the rest of us? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Excellent question. So, um, tzaddikim, uh, righteous people. So we we explained this actually a few classes a few uh, days ago in the class that we spoke that all souls come from different worlds and different attrib divine attributes in those worlds. Uh, which means the righteous, the very loftiest of righteous, they come from the world of Atsilos, and as they migrate down their souls into a physical body over here, they don't pick up any of the um, uh, of the uh, I don't know the the extraneous things in the other worlds. 
spiritual worlds and they remain very very lofty souls now what it means a very lofty soul as opposed to probably in our generation very um you know foot soldier uh you know we're like we're, we're like the privates we're like the foot soldiers you know we're not the generals um like the Lubavitcher Rebbe you know or other very lofty souls what je- that means it doesn't mean that one is more Jewish and one is less Jewish not at all it just means the function of that soul is going to be very different as a result of where the where it stems from and how it migrated into the body down here that's what it means um that that's the only distinction so a righteous person is not any more jewish than someone who is a russia who is uh you know um off off the path right so much so that um you know when it comes for a minion they both count for one for example um okay excuse me. one second crystal just give me a moment because i I, I need to get to some questions that I had over here previously that I missed out. So I give me a moment just to get to them. And why am I not seeing? Is it question marks before? Davida, help me over here because I don't see the question. Oh, one second. Okay, Michael, we dealt with. Okay. And Marty, we dealt with. Daniel, we dealt with also, I think. I didn't deal with someone's questions on Facebook. Oh, Claudia. Tanya, look at you. The souls of the nations emanate from... Okay, yes. Thank you. Liana. Liana, from Montreal. So, one second. Um, but doesn't the world need all soul, Jewish and non-Jewish is the aim to have only a certain percentage of Jewish souls almost like the, the good recipe everything needs to be in the right proportion uh yes everything needs to be in the right proportion when it comes to a good recipe absolutely um I don't know if that's the metaphor over here but in in the in the respect that every human being has their role that they need to play absolutely correct that is true um So Claudia is asking, could a non-Jew pray for a Jew and could a Jew pray for a non-Jew? Yes, absolutely. No, no question about it. Absolutely. Um, and just one last thing. Daniel's asking about a Noahide wearing a kippah. Not sure if, oh, no, I didn't answer that. So Daniel, um, a Noahide should probably not wear a kippah um, because that's a sign of someone who's Jewish. So I would probably suggest that it uh, be uh, not something uh, that, that you do. Crystal, go ahead. Hello, good morning. Thank good morning. Sorry? A question slash comment. Um, I'm currently on a, doing a gay route and one of my study partners has let me know, you know, it's that you do have a Jewish soul, but I'm training my body to hold my Jewish soul. And I wanted to know if you agreed with that or if you could expand on that a little bit for me. Great question, Crystal. Great. Um, If you don't mind um, me just making a a statement about your conversion, or not a statement, but, um, you know, um, just a suggestion maybe that uh, and perhaps that's what you're doing and and it sounds by the way you're asking and from your study partner that it should be done according with a um a proper based in that is uh, following halacha um and it's not about orthodox or conservative or reform no it's an rca Um, oh beautiful perfect wait okay excellent excellent um so uh, again um the it's interesting that the uh, the sages in the talmud call a non there's no such thing as a non-jew that can convert to judaism what it is is a convert that converts to judaism the term in the talmud is not a non-jew that converts to judaism it's a gersh and his gayer a a convert that converts is the term you know to translate it uh, to translate it a convert that converts 
What do you mean a convert to convert? So what do you mean? Uh, because the convert had a spark of a Jewish soul, but not a flame. The conversion process, and you know, they take a flint stone, you have to rub it very harshly in order to make a fire. Why? Because there's a spark of, uh, in there, but not a flame. But if you rub it harshly, you'll get a, um, you'll get a flame, and that's uh, exactly, exactly what happens with uh, the process of someone who converts. It's not an easy process, and it's not meant to be easy. And the reason for that is because there's a spark there that needs to become a flame. Um, and, and not just uh, the, that the body uh, of the body, but the, 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 the soul itself. It's the spark of a Jewish soul uh, through the process of conversion and ultimately through the mikvah, you know, and acceptance of, uh, of Torah and mitzvahs is what makes it into a real flame. So that's the way, you know, we, it's described in, you know, from a Tanya perspective. So it might be a little nuance different, but, uh, you know, somewhat similar. Is that clear in the sense? Is that... Uh... And, yes, thank you very much. All right, beautiful. Okay, let me just... Um, give me one moment over here. Did I... Wow. I have my daughter Leia. I have my daughter Mushki here. This is uh, phenomenal. <laughs> I'm a very lucky man. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. We uh, are. Can I really quick. Oh, go ahead, Batya. I wanted to, um, if you would be able to address when we have someone dominating for us, it's like having the Rebbe. Um, intercede for us versus having uh, having uh, maybe a non-Jew or even uh, a Jewish person uh, maybe not as a lofty soul and the weight that the interceding carries. Well, I, I, I wasn't clear what, what the question was. What, what's the question on that? Meaning the, the weight that the Sadiq carries when he's interceding for you versus oh, someone yes. spoke to you earlier about that and I don't think it you I don't think you really answered it in the sense oh, that well the yes weight. right so since right. it's a loftier soul therefore their divine connection is greater you know um or and by the way just because you have a loftier soul doesn't mean that you have a greater connection you have to of course uh, through your divine service your own efforts get there but you have the capability, that righteous person has the capability of being a soul of atzilus, um, of a much more refined, sensitive connection to the divine. And therefore, when they intercede on our behalf, exactly as, as Bachi, as you said, um, they can affect much greater um, accomplishment. Now, that being said, in the foot soldier is the one who goes into battle goes into the fire and you know and and is the hand-to-hand combat so to speak of transforming a dark world into a world of light so the foot soldier or as i call it the truck driver is the one who's bringing that pill it's, i gave a metaphor for you um, uh, last week of the four worlds if uh, you recall um that the truck driver who's taking this magic pill who's you know who, that is the pill that's going to bring healing to every single illness right well if you have the 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 the, the visionary which is the soul of atzilus if you have the scientist the, the who comprehend the the science of the pill which is the world of Bria, the world of divine comprehension. And if you have a, a soul that is from the world of emotion, which is the, the marketers, you know, who know how to bring this to market, this great pill, right? Because if you have the scientists and you have the visionary, but you don't have the marketers, then, you know, no one's going to know about it. But, you know, everybody can know about it. But if you don't have the truck driver who brings it, the pill to the drugstore, right, that it could be, you know, that it could be uh, attained, and and bring healing you've got nothing 
So a soul that a soul though that comes from a lower place in the divine order has their place in the and their purpose to fulfill in this world. So yes, we might not be as sensitive to the divine and therefore not be able to have the impact in a in the in the global way perhaps as the lofty souls do, but we're the foot soldiers that you know can have our true effect and make a world of good and change the world for good. And with that, thank you, Bhakti, for that. And with that, I uh, need to conclude. If there's any other questions, we're going to have to deal with it um, uh, next week. We're not going to be learning for the next two days because Shabbos and, and Yom Tov, of course, uh, for the next two days. But we will continue, God willing, on Monday. We will recap the things that for the next two days. We'll go through that, and then we'll do, of course, that uh, that particular day. And that will be Monday at 9.30. Um, I want to thank you all. This is amazing. And I want to thank the Instagrammers that uh, that came on. This is the first time I'm doing this. And I hope that it's uh, worthy of doing it again. I think so. Oh, well, especially if my daughters are there. <laughs> I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zuch and today in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege, a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. Shabbos. A great Shabbos. A Yom Tov. This is a very special Yom Tov of... We're going to cross the sea. We're going to have Mashiach Suda. By the way, we're going to have here in Chabad Zichrein Mashiach Suda. And, ooh, we're going to have on Zoom, uh, you know, we're going to have on Zoom, and maybe we'll even have it on, we'll have it on Facebook and on Clubhouse, Sunday night, 9 p.m., um, Daylight Savings Time. So if, if Shabbos and Yom, if Yom Tov is finished for you, come and join us because we're going to have Mashiach Suda celebration. We're going to say L'chaim. Have matzah, have a wonderful uh, celebration. Uh, again, 9 p.m. Um, Sunday night, Eastern, come and join us. Eastern Eastern Standard Time, right? Yeah, well, now it's daylight saving time, but yeah, same idea. Yes, absolutely. All right, folks, thank you very much. God bless you all. Be well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Rabbi. Good Shabbos. Thank you, good Shabbos. Good Shabbos, everybody. Shabbos, good thank job. you. Good Shabbos, everyone. Thank you all. All the best. Be well. All right. Amazing. I don't even know how, how do you end over here on. Uh... Oh, okay. We'll have to get back to some questions over here. We will uh, get back to Instagram. Thank you. And everyone on Facebook, amazing. Thank you for um, making it through. I, I think, I, I hope I got to everybody. Um, God bless you all.